As they tell the stories we know And those we don't Are waiting to be held They're taken everybody, thank you all for coming. My name is Sean Bithell, I own the bookshop and um, I've just today had a diary of a bookseller published um, and unfortunately I've run out of copies already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it will be available uh, somewhere but not on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, first of all I'll just tell you a little bit about the history of the building. Um, there would have been a building on this site for about a thousand years um, and the shape of it now, the sort of Georgian style, was thanks to the provost of Wigtown in about 1830, who was called George McAfee, who um, basically gave it the, a sort of Georgian look of, of the period. Um, and it stayed as a family home up until about 1900, when um, it became a draper's. And the story I've heard, and I don't know whether it's true or not, is that the last commercial sailing ship to come into Wigtown, it was the skipper of that boat that, um, that, that turned, opened the shop as a draper's. In the 1950s it became a uh, greengrocer's and the only evidence still of that is when we sanded the floor the only bit I couldn't sand out was this bit here where the, um, the, fri the freezer used to sit uh, and it obviously pushed whatever liquid is in the li linoleum tiles through uh, and into the floor and then it became a bookshop about 33 years ago and uh, has been a bookshop ever since. Now I'm going to introduce you to Sarah Pierce who uh, worked in the shop very soon after I bought it for a few years uh, until I could eventually get rid of her um, <laughs> and uh, she asked me to give her a reference for a job uh, and so this is what I wrote to her. Sarah worked Saturdays at the bookshop, 17 North Main Street, Wigtown, for three years while she was at the Douglas Stewart High School. When I say worked, I use, the, I use the word in the most loose possible term. She spent the entire day either standing outside the shop smoking and snarling at people trying to enter the building or, or watching repeats of Hollyoaks on 4OD. <laughs> Although she was generally punctual, she often arrived either severely uh, either drunk or severely hungover. <laughs> she was usually rude and aggressive. She rarely did as she was told and never in the entire three years of her time here did anything constructive without having been told to do so. <laughs> <laughs> she invariably left a trail of rubbish behind her, usually consisting of iron brew bottles, crisp packets, chocolate wrappers and cigarette packets. She constantly stole lighters and matches from the business and was offensive and frequently violent towards me. <laughs> she was a valued member of staff and I have no hesitation in recommending her. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was quite generous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to go through here now. In the shop with books I smell the pages, excitement grew. This beautiful creature on the steps is Robert Twigger, who uh, has been to the festival almost every year and is uh, a sort of fixture. And um, a few years ago, we decided to build this thing here, which is a bed in the shop, as a sort of homage to Shakespeare and company in, in Paris. And uh, Robert's about to tell you a story of an amusing night during the festival a few years ago. <laughs> A woman telephoned three days before the festival to book the festival bed for the second Saturday night. She arrived at 4 p.m. and I, this is Sean writing, I showed her where everything was and gave her a key to the side door so she could come in and go as she pleased. At 8 p.m. we all trooped off to the Cayley and spent the evening dancing and drinking, getting in at about 11.30 p.m. and up to the kitchen where the revelry continued about three feet above the festival bed, so up there where the woman who had booked in was clearly trying to sleep. As the night wore on, more and more people asked if they could crash in the shop for the night. A lot of drink had been consumed. 
and people had forgotten really what was going on at all. All the available beds rapidly filled and I realised that I'd inadvertently evicted Robert Twigger, me, from his room, forgetting that he would need somewhere to sleep. What I'd also forgotten about was that I'd booked out the festival bed to the woman asleep downstairs, so when it came to bedtime, I told Twigger that he could sleep in the festival bed, at which point he wandered off down there to the horrified surprise of the woman who awoke to find him clambering into her bed. According to Rob, who appeared again less than a minute after I'd suggested that he sleep there, she sat bolt upright and barked, What are you doing? I paid £25 to sleep here tonight. It's quite low though. <laughs> I opened the shop at 2pm just as the bookshop band arrived. They set up and started the gig at 3.30pm. They were wonderful. Blimey, I must have had. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing a tour of Scotland and the north of England, and Elliot, Adrian, you um, persuaded them to come to Wigtown and perform in the shop. They brought their friend John along to give them a hand with setting up. Their USP is that they mainly play in bookshops, and all of their songs are based on books they've read. The shop was full for their gig. Callum brought his children along too. In the evening, once we'd eaten, uh, the instruments came out again and the wine and beer began to flow and they sang folk songs, John's speciality. We drank and sang until 3 a.m. <laughs> so we thought we'd have a go just trying, like Sean's made, you know, made a book out of writing down his memories, so we thought we'd just have a go trying to write down our memories of that evening because um, basically Sean was pretty much snoring and to sleep through most of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. There's a couple of <laughs> The night we came to Wigtown, Scotland's famous book town. Looking for a concert, well how else would we find it? We played in the bookshop and never wanted to stop. Then came down the tees and we sold a bunch of CDs. The night we came to Wigtown, Scotland's famous book town. Everybody's in town, Adrian's up from London Bottles started opening, birthdays we were toasting But good excuses any to celebrate Night we came to Wigtown, Scotland's famous book town Candles lit for supper, so we headed up the stairs To Sean's kitchen table we were eating Out comes the banjo and H.A. man Red wine, it was flowing, drinking to the morning, singing silly songs and dancing in our long jumps. Ooh, yeah. it feels like home. We don't want to go. The night we came to Wigtown, Scotland's famous book town, while Sean was slurring, we started exploring. Looking through the book's horny Sean shelf of porn He says it's for his punters but you can't help but wonders Discovering the train sets underneath the carpets Harmonies and cartwheels, two beds in the pulpits Stumbling and giggling, sleeping, Sean is dribbling Everyone is very wasted <laughs> It was a very fun day, but not wise for a Sunday We slept in for two days, while Sean got up on Monday He opened up the shop and he wrote in his diary Some things he forgot, they just slipped out his memory Then his book got bought, so now he's an author But our entry is too short and we think that we ought to Explain to everyone what really went on While Sean was asleep and snoring Scotland's famous book town Now we've moved to Wigtown So we can expose him The night we came to Wigtown Scotland's famous book town Now we've moved to Wigtown So now we can expose him Right, everyone else is finished. Very swiftly on <laughs> No,
Harry and I built the Fox's Den a few years ago, and during Wigton's annual book festival, we used it as a venue for very small and unusual events. Now, I have to tell you, it's the first time I've been described as very small, unusual, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year, the most tattooed man in Scotland gave a 20-minute talk about the history of tattooing, and he stripped down to his underpants to illustrate various elements of it. As the talk progressed, an elderly woman mistaking the building for a toilet inadvertently <laughs> wandered in towards the end of the talk to find him standing there almost naked, boxers only. I'm not sure she has ever recovered. True to say, she's never been seen in Wigton since. <laughs> I sink myself into a black and settled out. I sink myself into a black and settled out. Ben and Beth are going to play one final song. This is called Death to the Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> In they come and out they go I don't know like the smelly ones Or the ones that stand right in the way To be honest that's nearly everyone 
crisis mode. Well, thank you all very much for coming. Um, the, the Kindle at, that I shot was actually there, <laughs> mounted. Um, uh, uh, thanks, Ben and Beth, for that. And before you go, we're going to give you a little present each, which is a free book. I sing my song to I sing myself into a circle and settle down. I sing myself into a circle and settle down. I sing myself into a circle and settle down.